A few weeks ago, a good friend of ours put out some prayer requests as they were entering into a new stage in their experience and in their lives. And most of the prayer requests that they put out were what you'd expect given this circumstance. But one of them was that they would hopefully not experience any imposter syndrome. And that caught my eye, not least of which, and not least of the, which was the reason that I didn't really know what it meant. And so I had to go away and, and look it up. So thankfully, Google quickly gave me an answer. And it's, it's basically the fear of being found out for what we really are. And it's the sort of thing, it, the, 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 the way it's described is uh, that people will have a lack of self-confidence. Those suffering with imposter syndrome will have a lack of self-confidence and feelings of inadequacy, constantly comparing themselves to others, anxious, self-doubting, distrusting your own uh, intuition and your own capabilities and dwelling on the past. And as I looked at that, I thought, well, that describes me a bit too closely for my own liking. These are all things which I can feel at times as I look at myself. Uh, I can feel a lack of self-confidence in myself. I can feel inad inadequate. I can constantly compare myself to others and feel anxious about where my mind takes me. And I guess for me that, you know, can lead to, you know, at times feeling down, feeling depressed about my life about and, and with a fear of being found out for the person that I really am. But thankfully, thankfully, that day, having looked at this and the immediate thoughts that came into my mind um, in my reading plan, I was looking in Psalm 8. And let me read you Psalm 8 and then just have a few observations on how that spoke into my thinking that day. It's a very familiar Psalm. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You've established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And the, the phrase which really jumped out at me as I read that psalm is the, the, the central phrase, the one right in the middle. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care? Because the reality is, the psalmist is declaring here that God is mindful of us does care for us. God, our creator, the one who knows us better than anyone else can, has us constantly in his mind and he cares for us. And the psalmist goes on to, to say that he's given us a status that we don't deserve. And we can rest in this. We can declare with the psalmist that the Lord, our Lord, how majestic is his name in all the earth. And so if God looks on us in this way, if God sees into the very depths of our souls, he sees what we do and more concerningly in some ways, he sees into our very hearts. If he sees all of that and yet he still declares that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he has given us a status within his kingdom to rule over his kingdom alongside him under his kingship. If God can do all of that, knowing us better than we know ourselves, then what have we, what have I to fear from man finding out what's on my heart, what's in my heart? Nothing is the answer. The one person who I seek to please is God and I need to rest in that and not become anxious 
when I think of how I may have feelings of uh, lack of self-confidence, when I may feel inadequate, when I may feel inadequate, particularly compared to others. I need to rest in the fact that God sees me, he knows me, he loves me, and he has given me a status which is beyond anything that I deserve or could imagine. And I need to stop dwelling on the past. That's one of the, the key elements of this syndrome is a dwelling on the past. And of course, as, as a Christian, as believers, yes, we need to repent where, we, where, where it's necessary of our past, but we need to look to the future because that future is a future which is glorious. It's a, glor a future which is filled with hope and it's a future which is filled with hope because of who God is and what he has done for us. So let's take heart. If we find ourselves navel gazing and fearful of what others may think of us if they really knew us, let's take comfort in the fact that there is one who really, really does know us and yet he still loves us and he still cares for us. God bless you.